first section, which we have organized inside of the European Association for Predictive Preventive Personalized Medicine, is dedicated to young professionals. This is very important to stress why. Because uh, seniors who are working now for the structure of the association, they are trying to collect single expertise everywhere in the world to bring it together in the, uh, in the co concept and to create the new philosophy. What we are doing now is creating the concept, but your generation will work already with this concept as a routine. So that's why it is very important the dialogue between seniors and you as the next generation, as the user, let's say, or end user of this philosophy to understand whether we are doing everything correctly, whether you have enough information and where are our gaps and lacks in terms of education. Because this is very important that you understand this philosophy, that you can follow and that you can promote it further. The, the lectures today gave a very broad and a very good overview uh, of what uh, is understood uh, under, uh, under uh, preventive and or predictive and, and personalized medicine and uh, it also put it into the policy perspective so what impact it will have uh, on the on the healthcare in the future so i uh, instead of talking about what i did understood i very much are more interested in what impact it will have on the healthcare and uh, it can be defined at different levels at the, at the level of the patient at the level of the doctor at the institution and at the government or at the nationwide level and uh, yes, I think this is at the moment and this will be the major uh, factor uh, that uh, influences uh, the, the healthcare. Uh, what from the curriculum side, I, I do think uh, that this sort of integration of the different elements needs to be based in the curriculum. So we do not need to study uh, separately, molecular biology, let's say, biochemistry, uh, clinical genetics, genomics, and let's say rheumatology, but somehow uh, we rather should have a functional units and integrate the biochemistry part into the clinical rheumatology to, to be able to, to, to better be on the, on the level that is expected to be able to do with the patients in the future. For me as a medical doctor, um, actually there is a great impact of personalized medicine in the future, but it's, it's uh, continuously emerging. Uh, for example, I'm dealing with uh, Parkinsonian patients. And uh, if you know there are some uh, genetic aspects of Parkinson's disease, so there are some monogenic forms of Parkinson's disease, and uh, actually it is really important to uh, detect those patients who has Parkin mutation uh, because if we know that they have this mutation in the Parkin genes, uh, then uh, we have to do the therapy a little other way. More because targeted. they are yes, mm -hmm. because they are more prone uh, mm -hmm. to have dyskinesias, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to uh, care about this. Mm -hmm. Also, another aspect you have mentioned that uh, yeah, this is really a broad spectrum from from basic sciences to to the medical applications and. Uh, and maybe a point when this can interact with each other are the biobanks. Mm -hmm. So the biobank system, uh, medical doctors, clinicians, mm -hmm. also bioinformaticians, mm -hmm. and and biologists work together uh, uh, to make a, a biobank uh, for research, but also for for the clinical practice. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's a that's a good example for uh, for the different fields uh, working together. Very well. So just to summarize and to comment on what uh, uh, Peter has said, first of all, 
uh, mutations. Very important point. 30 years we are working with genomics. We learned a lot. We can make a good use of some knowledge uh, which we have received from this field. But please, this is my recommendation. Never trust in one methodology because the problem is always over interpretation. You heard today that even if you know exactly, uh, you have the information about certain mutations, uh, the um, realization could be either 50-50 or even less. Uh, remember, for example, the case with BRCA mutation in breast cancer. How long time we, we hoped that this will solve the prediction in breast cancer? It is not the case. Why? Because we learn from the statistics afterwards that the, uh, the uh, interpretation is 50-50. Even if there is a uh, familial case with two mutations, BRCA1 and 2, no? the, uh, the, the uh, one set of the pathology is 50-50. What can you say to the patient if you know that it can be but not must be? It means that after the genomic level, you should go further for epigenomic level, looking for proteomics, uh, subcellular imaging, medical imaging with radiology, and so on. So in the future program in Horizon 2020, there is a certain budget which is dedicated particularly to new medical records where the synthesized information will be presented. Genomics, uh, other omics, epigenomic, metabolomic, imaging, history of the family. So you should really work with all integrative information. And I'm coming back to Christian's comment, but what he really understood perfectly well, integration as much as possible of all available technologies, not to make uh, the over interpretation from one technology. This is very, very important. I uh, worked for four years uh, in the laboratory of uh, Professor Molnar, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a student. I, I think I am the youngest here, and I live in this uh, paradigm change in uh, the Samuels University and the new curriculum. And uh, I, I think. Uh, it's a very exciting and interesting uh, way of the medicine and, and I, I think uh, yeah, we can see uh, now the beneficial effect of, of this uh, new, uh, uh, new, new uh, way of treatment, the uh, PPPs. I have had the opportunity uh, in, uh, work uh, uh, on a pro project where we uh, investigated uh, more than 300 uh, uh, deaf uh, deafness and we were uh, uh, patient uh, deaf uh, patients and we uh, examined two uh, mitochondrial DNA mutation uh, uh, with uh, associated with aminoglycosid induced uh, deafness. And uh, I think that's that's a, a little part of the whole thing, but uh, I feel it. It's very important important to me, and and that's that's a great feeling. And and uh, I I think um, it's uh, uh, good to be a student nowadays, a medical student nowadays. It is very important that you learn as much as possible from biotechnology, that you understand which biotechnological methodology you can use in your future career. Uh, try to go for uh, your laboratory skills, even in summer vacations. Make you good use of your time to learn at least something from this technology that you understand what is the future in terms of uh, biomedicine, how you can complete your knowledge uh, classical medical knowledge with biotechnologies and of course try to learn as much as possible about bioinformatics because coming to back to medical records you know without understanding of algorithms it will be very difficult to put this information together because how you can learn about the full picture of your patient and how you can treat without knowing exactly his individual parameters so bioinformatics it will be a really platform between classical medical education and biotechnology bringing things together and once more don't forget to use always 
also non-sophisticated methodology, you know. Remember that uh, uh, family doctors uh, some centuries ago, what they did, uh, the patient is coming to you, first of all, give your hand here, yeah, good morning, how you are doing. You can even measure the temperature of, your, of, of the hands, you know, without application of genomics, proteomics, you know try to use the whole spectrum of methodology starting with non-sophisticated simple which we learn from previous generation to learn more about your patient and then step by step increasing the level genomics epigenomics and so on do you have already didactic materials for this integrative knowledge or not I'm not sure I need to say, so I graduated a couple of years ago, that time we did not have, and I really felt after that years, I really, f I really missed uh, that, uh, that materials. Do you need additional uh, didactic material to learn more about the integrative approach, or you have enough? No, um, I, I understand uh, Christian's comments, and I agree with him. Um, I would be personally very interested in uh, the different biomarkers, and they use um, connected to the diverse um, use of um, uh, various specialties um, for personalized medicine and that would be very much welcome from my side to have a comprehensive uh, overview of biomarkers used. We try to cover these deficits, so definitely we will inform you through the uh, section of young professionals in the association, through the Society of George uh, Nimit, and uh, through the national representative of EPMA here in Hungary, Dr. Tamas Mayer. Mm -hmm.